Prepare the way of the Lord. Prepare the way of the Lord. Majestic and holiness, or some and glory. Our God, we will not be silent from speaking His word. We cry to the nations, prepare the way of the Lord. Prepare the way of the Lord. Majestic and holy. Prepare the way of the Lord. Prepare the way of the Lord. All authority is invested in the name of Jesus and at the sounding of his name. At the sounding of his name, we will look. again to homespun number seven can you believe it seven weeks ago we started uh, this series and um, I just saw it as a one-off to start with but my goodness it's grown in momentum and in these uncertain times when we're so many of us around the world are in quarantine I hope that you find this a, a steady source of, of light and, and love it's important that we collectively share together and for those of you who are viewing for the first time a, a big welcome to you to those of you who are part of the club joining with us every week again a bit a big welcome to you and it's a great privilege and uh, to be able to share songs and music with you songs new and old um, I've got some old ones got some new ones to sing uh, today and we've got a few requests of, of different people that have uh, asked for specific songs. Jonathan Miles up there in Stoke, well, he requested this uh, song earlier in the week. I'm going to do it. It's an old one from one of my earlier albums. See if you remember it. Shout for joy and sing. Let your praises ring. See that God is building a kingdom for a king. His dwelling Jesus 
take me back one from my um album uh which one was that 
uh, yeah, Army of Ordinary People, and then another album, part of a mystery. Uh, well, those those songs go back a bit. Hope you've had a good week. Um, yes, this week just seems to have shot by for me. How's your hair doing? Mine's growing again. Uh, not quite off the screen, as my son pointed out, but uh, yes, <laughs> great to be back with you. The week started uh, rather sadly for me because um, many of you will have seen on, on Facebook my dear uh, friend and one of the great mentors in my uh, spiritual life, Morris Smith, uh, passed away at the age of 93 and he was such a, a great man and such a great inspiration to me. I've known him since I was a, a teenager and um, well he spotted some potential in me and pretty soon started to take me around the country as a, a sort of singer. I, he would speak for long periods of time and uh, I would sing. Mind you, he was a very sort of spontaneous person, dear Morris, and uh, sometimes he would be speaking all night and I would just get a song in other nights. He would have nothing to say and I would be singing all night and he would just say a few closing words at the end. Morris was a character. He was a one-off and I hope, you know, in our own journey we have people like that, that we see as a source of inspiration, perhaps figures who are a little bit older in the faith or, you know, maybe even younger ones, I don't know, but uh, people who inspire us and certainly Morris inspired us because he lived out a life of grace. You will know so many of the songs that I write, I have at the bedrock of what I write, this sense of God's grace being upon us. Morris was always uh, fun to be around. He never shirked uh, controversy and he got himself in lots of situations, scrapes and hot water. He had lots of humorous songs and his, his stories will live on. And uh, I reminisced all week really about, about Morris and the inspiration he was not only to me, but I know to many uh, around this country and indeed around the world. Morris was a pioneer. He was someone who saw a vision of the church being relational. He was someone who saw a church as being non-religious. How Jesus turned things upside down by his pronouncements, by his way of living that shocked so many of the religious Pharisees of the time. He was a uh, well, a, a speaker, but also a writer. And um, well, I've got actually the very first book that he wrote because he became a Christian in 1955. And he wrote a book which was, um, well, I have to say, it's the worst cover for a book that you could ever have because it certainly was not attractive, th this book, although the contents were extremely attractive. This book called 5555, which was the date that he became a Christian. Uh, well, I don't know if he saw the cover, and it certainly isn't a picture of Morris on the front, but this is it, if you can see it there. The most dull, boring cover I've ever seen of a book. Grey, looking fed up, looking monotonous, and uh, well, it doesn't allure you to the book, but one book that he wrote which does allure me to it is one which is called Grace and it's a very very simple book in fact Morris you know shaved down all his thoughts into very simple statements and another dear friend of mine Nick Butterworth a great illustrator uh, again another very good friend of mine he did illustrations in the book so it makes it even more readable and there's lots of humorous illustrations but I want to give you some idea, for those of you who know Morris, uh, you will relate to this. Uh, an early pioneer in the house church movement and one who, you know, wasn't afraid of controversy. One who would always welcome new ideas and new things. Um, you know, this is Morris. And this maybe says something about Morris's heart. Bear with it because... Um, well, it gets a bit fruity at one point, but I'll just read you a couple of paragraphs from um, this book, Grace, from Maurice Smith. 
It was many years ago now that I decided to embark upon a week-long fast. Some prominent Christian leaders have been speaking of the benefits of long-term fasting and someone with aspirations to be the next John Wesley, I couldn't afford to miss a trick. I declared that I would take no solid food for a week, but the plan backfired. On day one, I went down with agonising pains in unmentionable places. My best friend, who had heard of my plight, called round to cheer me up. Oh my goodness, he explained. You look terrible. That was probably Ted Crick. The next visitor was my neighbour, who was talking, who was taking redirected phone calls from me, for me. Guess what, he said. I've just had a call from a black magic circle. They say they have procured your death. As I said, my efforts were not encouraging. The pain got worse. Finally, at my lowest point, I swore. For the first time in years of pious living and told God just what he could do with his high calling. If this was my reward for dedication, then I wanted no more. Stoically, I refused medical help, feeling that this would mean I was not trusting God. By day six, I had wilted completely. I belated out my complaint to God in one more penitent term. I failed, Lord. Other men seemed to be able to press on through, but, I, but they're made of sterner stuff. Under pressure, I swore at you and I gave up. I'm sorry. I won't persevere with my ministry. I'm a failure. It was then I experienced again one of those rare precious moments in life when the world seemed to stand still. Whether or not the voice was audible, I will not say with certainty, but I am certain of one thing. That small, small voice said, don't wor worry, Morris, you'll be okay. You have discovered my hobby. I collect failures. Well, what do you know? God is not looking for great heroes, but weak people through whom he can pour his strength. And I know the rest of the story because he then went on to speak the next day to a group of Cambridge students at uh, the university there. And God moved through him in a most powerful way. Out of weakness, we find our strength. And grace means that God comes to us, equips us, lifts us up and makes us people who are carriers of his divine life. Actually, as a little in incidental, uh, Nick's um, cartoon here, which I think is great, is uh, a man probably not very suited for a job, looking, uh, looking for a job at an interview. And uh, there's the, um, the boss who is looking back at him uh, around the desk. And the boss is saying, looking at his prospectus, successful, not exactly, Mr. Smedley. Let's just say you seem to be very well qualified for God's collection. Well, God has that habit of taking us where we are and moving us. And I learned that from Morris and I thank God for him and indeed many others who shine a light and a shine a torch for grace and for truth. And uh, I guess this was the inspiration of this song. The opening track of a familiar album to many of you. There's a new day dawning There's a fresh wind that's blowing There's a new wave that's coming For the people of the Lord Who are sensing freedom the life he has given it's a time of liberation for the people of the Lord God of grace we worship you for you alone are worthy God of grace
guilt or accusation will be our motivation for the growing revelation of the glory of the Lord. We are a new creation. By our demonstration, we reveal the incarnation of the glory of the Lord. God of grace, we worship you, for you alone are worthy. God of grace. You've probably seen my 12 string over to the side. Well, one of my chosen possessions, or treasured possessions, should I say. Um, from the 1960s, I introduced it to you a few weeks back, and, um, well, I thought it'd be nice. Actually, it was asking if it could make another appearance. Terry Hollick, well... You uh, suggested a song, I'm going to do that one in a minute, but uh, Glenn, Glenn Medcalf. The funny thing is, you know, when you're doing a series like this, people suggest songs and uh, it's great. Thank you so much for all the people who are suggesting songs. And some of them I haven't played for a while, so I have to dig them out of my files and think, how did that one go? I haven't played this. And uh, then you end up playing it and thinking, actually, it's quite good. Why did I stop singing it? Um, but uh, Glenn... for you and all the viewers out there. A song from the album, The New Hearts. And I'm wearing a very cool leather jacket on the front. I'm walking around the streets of Guildford while I'm doing so. I 
I will give my allegiance that all that I have be given to you. My heart's desire is to lift your name high and crown you with honor. Terry Hollick. So freely flows the endless love you give to me. So freely, not dependent on my part. I am reaching out, revealing the love within your heart. As I am reaching out, revealing the love. I am reaching 
reaching out, reveal the love within your heart. Amen. That's it. Reveal the love within your heart. The Bible says that God is love. It's not just an attribute, but that's the core of who he is. Well, I hope you've had a good week. I mean, I certainly have. Special time for, for many of you. Uh, birthday time, Mike Plant. Uh, happy birthday to you. I know you're, you're watching. Val Aris, your birthday as well. Uh, I have to say, um, Paula, Paula uh, Cornwall, uh, I missed you out last week. Uh, your uh, daughter, uh, uh, Jennifer, well, she, she requested, and I had it all lined up to say happy birthday to you. I'm so sorry. But all those who are having birthdays, I hope you're having a great time. Strange, isn't it? Strange time uh, to be having a birthday, but um, enjoy yourself, whatever. And I'm so pleased that you've uh, tuned into this. Well, what about uh, care a, you know, spare a thought for Rosa uh, Falcini? I, I mean, she ordered uh, a set of headphones uh, last week. I was reading about this um, uh, in one of the papers, she ordered a set of headphones uh, last week on the on the internet, and um, well, she must have got confused when she was writing into into the boxes that you that you do, you know, the address and uh, and so on, uh, because um, when the when the headphones arrive via Amazon or the special delivery. She picked them out and uh, they had a personalised inscription. And she must have written in the wrong box. That's all I can think. She had this personalised inscription which said, leave in the back garden if I'm not there. We get things wrong sometimes, don't we? <laughs> well, Sue Criddle. You requested a song last week and I'm going to sing it for you uh, this week. It reminds me of Steve playing the, uh, the keyboard for me over so many years. And Steve, if you're watching, you're with me there. Great uh, to know you're, you're watching. Sue, um, this is for you. Actually, I saw a, a video in my uh, computer files the other day. Uh, Pat showed it to me. Uh, and I think I'm going to... Um, I think I'm going to post it up at some time because I look so young. It's only about 10 years ago, but uh, it was taken at Easter, people. And, uh, well, we were very rock and roll, I tell you. We were really our band. My goodness, Steve, Simon, Lizzie, oh dear. We were rocking it out. And uh, this was a song from that session, which is called One Heart. One Heart, One Spirit. We are called by God to reach out and serve one another in the Father's love. Try it again. It won't be easy. It 
spirit we're marching to the sound of a different drum well that was fun thanks to our floor manager there mrs pat bilbury give her a big round of applause if she's doing great it's great to have pat and um you know with with morris uh i was speaking about earlier not only did he have an influence on my life he had an influence very profoundly on pat's and uh we thank god uh for for that um yeah, I mean, this is really beginning to uh, feel like home uh, being with you. Seven, seven weeks in, next week will be the eighth week. Fantastic. I want to tell you about this podcast series, which uh, I'm going to be starting up um, in uh, ooh, 14th, 14th of May. It will be going on online. And uh, Ray Hughes will be joining me with a conversation. For those of you who don't know, uh, Ray Hughes is a... Uh, a, a real man of worship, but um, a real desire to see that worship spread out into creative ways. He comes from America, uh, born in Kentucky, which means he can really talk, and uh, living now in Louisiana, right opposite, actually, um, right near uh, Muscle Shoals Studio, which is where the Rolling Stones did um, some of their albums, as indeed Paul Simon and um, some other great uh, musicians. It's a wonderful recording studio. And uh, Ray is a musician, a uh, speaker, a uh, bit of a poet, well not a bit of a poet, a poet, a storyteller. And um, I had a few months ago a, a really good conversation with him that I'm looking forward to sharing on this uh, podcast. It's, it's an in-depth uh, uh, conversation, so you know you need to make yourself a cup of tea and uh, sit there, if you're English that is, uh, coffee or iced tea if you're American. Um, and uh, give it a good listen. Uh, I've got other people lined up as, as time will go on. Uh, Malcolm Geit, a, a poet friend of mine. Um, wow, he's a, he certainly is someone who can uh, put words together and uh, he's, he's going to be taking up that theme of, of words and the, the power of words in the, in the coming months, as indeed uh, Wayne Drain, a good friend of mine, uh, speaking about the prophetic. Um, We've got a whole range of people. I won't list them all because I might I might miss somebody from the out. But just want to give you a flavour of that which is going on stream, and I'll give you instructions how to how to get it, so you don't need to worry. Um, but uh, we're beginning the, the build up for that, and I hope you're going to enjoy it because the idea is to push back the barriers of what we think creative is. We think creative is, you know, standing in a certain way in church with a certain kind of sound in 
in, in your, your, your band and playing the, the, the now chords of today. But of course, very soon those will be the chords of tomorrow. God wants us to be original. Uh, he wants us to find our voice in, in what we're doing. And um, he wants us to uh, express ourselves in, in powerful ways. Um, David Hall, well, he um, asked me to write a song or suggested I write, wrote a song because, you know, we're, we're part of this, uh, these sessions are to talk and think about um, those people who are helping us so much, the key workers at this time. In whatever country we are, we have our national health, we have uh, uh, our care workers who are working in care homes, uh, we have the, the people who clear the streets and the, 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 the rubbish collectors, all sorts of things. And, uh, it, you know, a lot of people shared this, this song that I wrote just a few weeks ago in different situations. It ended up Pam Rhodes um, uh, playing the video on her, her show on Premier Radio. Um, uh, David suggested it might be good uh, to sing it again just so that we don't forget about it. So um, I'm going to sing it to you. And it takes up this theme which is in Isaiah where it talks about how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Well. These people are displaying and showing something of God's characteristic by sharing mercy and sharing kindness and sharing compassion. So I've just changed it a little bit. Those people who share their skills to send, stem this tide. How beautiful are the feet of those who share their skills to stem this tide. Here's to the care workers, nurses and staff doctors fighting this virus attack. Hospital caterers, porters and ward cleaners piercing our bleakest house with lies. How beautiful are the feet of those who share their skills to stem this tide. Delivery drivers, shopkeepers and shelf stackers helping us weather the storm. Doing shifts voluntary in this emergency offering practical help to all. How beautiful are the feet of those who share their skills to stem this time. Frontline practitioners, teachers of key helpers, serving in so many ways. Responding unselfishly in local communities, tirelessly giving themselves each day.
Yeah. And we salute those key workers and we're so very, very thankful for them. For all that they do and whether they realise it or not, for the ways that they display the characteristics and the compassion of Almighty God, the Creator of all things, who is in all things and made all things by his hand. So important in these times of uncertainty, times of, un of quarantine, times where we have to celebrate birthdays, perhaps just on our own or just with our loved one. But we have to make do with uh, communication by the internet. Wow, I wish I had stocks and shares in Zoom, I tell you. <laughs> they must be doing so well. But it's not quite the same, is it? Personal contact is so important. I do my little bit here, week in, week out. I hope we feel we belong together. It's a real privilege to serve you in this way. We need to keep looking upwards. You know, you go to a great church or a great chapel and the greatest pictures are up on the ceiling. Think of Michelangelo and his great work, or you go in the House of Parliament and you walk into those, that building and you see the great, great picture upwards. How they did it, I do not know. But the artists, or the people who asked the artists to do these paintings, they knew what they were doing. Because the greatest work is found by looking upwards. And in these times of uncertainty, we need to be looking upwards. God isn't just up there in the heavens, of course. He's all around. And yet somehow as we look upwards, we begin to recognise the power of the gospel. Jesus, he was taken out into the wilderness and then he was tempted. Three times the devil came to him. If you are the son of God, then do this, do that. And on one occasion he said, if you're the son of God, bow down and worship me and I will give you all the kingdoms of this world. We'll fast forward to the book of Revelation, where we see the elders declaring with one voice the greatness of that Christ. Risen, triumphant now, reigning over all things. The sacrificial love who over love, who overcame. And they sang kingdoms of this world have now become the kingdoms of our Lord and Christ. Yes, the two stories work together, and as God's people, as we worship, let's be reminded that he is on the throne here and all around us. Second part, which is very simple. 
Yes, indeed, we celebrate that Christ is the Lord. And that's what these sessions are about, to bring back our perspective. I know, you know, we see it, but sometimes we see it through a glass dimly together to celebrate his victory and his very presentness with us. I'm seeing all sorts of uh, names up on the screen. I thank you for all those who are um, putting, sending greetings. I'm sorry if I don't read them all out. I don't just want to keep moving, moving along, but thank you. Bethany over there in Tennessee. Great to see your name up there. I'm going to finish with one final song. It's a song from, again, this, this album. My, I had looked so young there. Um, Yellow Shirt, Dave Bill. But this is one of those, actually, where I, this songbook, um, I, I actually uh, sold them all. And there was a, 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 a fire at the warehouse um, from the record company and the publishers of... of uh, of um, so many people's material and uh, this was was lost and uh, I ran out so I then had to do this peculiar thing where the only way I could get the songbook back was to ring uh, the Christian bookshop in Belfast I know some of you are watching in Belfast uh, to ring the Christian bookshop and um, get them to send it to me there's an advert on TV which is something like that where J.R. somebody, <laughs> anyway, um, Charlie Churchill uh, asked me, um, requested this song, it's a song that I love actually, I love singing, and again, it takes up this theme of God being on the throne, and um, we're going to finish with this uh, today, thank you so much for joining, I look forward to seeing you next week, my goodness, Homespun 8. Can you believe it? It will be next week. Uh, you know, come along, tell your friends. Uh, looking forward to seeing you again. And uh, here we go. It's a song which is called Reigning in All Splendor. Jesus
thanks for joining us. Thanks to our floor manager, Pat Bilbra. Thanks to Jan down there in Somerset for making all this happen. We appreciate you. Good night, everybody. Have a good evening and God bless you.